quick. Uh, um, my name is Heather Mishlack, uh, pronouns she, they, uh, and I've been a part of the Little Shop family for a long time. So uh, I'll chat a little bit about the beginning bit, but I want the rest of my team to go ahead and introduce themselves as well. Oh, should probably, there we go. Oh. Um, yeah, there. Um, I'll, I'll go first. Um, <laughs> Olivia's here helping me, uh, helping us with the computer on this side. So um, Sherry Bornhorst, um, I'm the teacher in residence with Little Shop of Physics, um, but I've been involved um, kind of off and on for the last 20 years. Um, I was once an undergraduate uh, intern with the program, then came back in different iterations and volunteered along the way and um, and now I'm back as teacher in residence and and next to me sharing my screen. <laughs> oh, is me. Um, I'm Olivia Santiago. I'm the STEM engagement coordinator. I graduated from Colorado State University with my master's in forest sciences and I was serendipitous enough to end up here at the Little Shop of Physics and it's been really cool to learn about STEM engagement and just like all the amazing things you can do when you work with a community of people who are dedicated to the same thing. Just a quick question. Can you can you see us? Because uh from, oh, I turned from off our side. That. Okay, okay. Very yeah, good. I can okay. turn it back off. So. No, no, <laughs> I just thought for later that it's gonna be important, but uh so okay, great. All right. That's awesome. And and just to let you all know, this we're a very informal group and as was mentioned earlier, um please feel free to ask us questions. We love questions and we're all about sharing what we know. Um, oh, and uh, Adam Perlstein uh, was not able to make it today, but he sends his best and uh, he is here in spirit. <laughs> yeah, just not feeling well. He was really bummed a mess. No. All right, uh, let's see, there we go. So yeah, we knew everybody wasn't uh, maybe immediately familiar with um, us here at Little Shop of Physics. So um, uh, I can be to blame for this messy slide. Um, <laughs> I know there's a way to create these things where things pop up over time, but I haven't figured that out yet. So um, uh, a brief history, this is very brief, um, but our program has been going for um, 30 years and trying to summarize that on one slide, um, you know, I had to pick some tidbits. So um, I guess the very beginning of Little Shop of Physics, we could we could say its roots really came out of um, some teachers called the physics department here at Colorado State University and requested that um, somebody come out and do some science demonstrations for their middle school kids uh, here locally. So Brian packed up some, uh, Brian is the founder um, uh, and a longtime director and actually just um, uh, if if you've met him before, Brian Jones uh, just recently um, stepped down as director, and uh, Heather um, Heather is our new director now. So that's that's been very exciting. Um, but that's jumping ahead to the end of the timeline, isn't it? So back to back to Brian at the beginning. Um, he shows up at the school. He's in a big auditorium. He's doing uh, science demonstration -y things to an auditorium full of middle schoolers, and um, they couldn't have been the least bit interested. It was note passing time. It was talk to your friend time, but um, uh, it, it wasn't all that fun for them to be watching this guy in the middle of the auditorium um, do his science demonstrations. And so in kind of a last throwing up his hands, like this was awful. <laughs> um, he said uh, to the middle schoolers, do you guys just want to come play with the stuff I brought? And uh, and sure enough, they did. They they wanted to come and play, and so uh, he noticed. Yeah, they don't want to watch me play. They want to play. Um, and so he came back to CSU, and he was telling some uh, SPS um, undergraduates um, about how terribly this had went mm -hmm. until the kids got their hands on the the experiments themselves. Um, and so he encouraged them to build some hands-on projects so that he could do this again, but make it a program where kids got their hands on things. Um, and so that's really the foundation of um, our Little Shop of Physics program. We uh, we travel around in a van full of hundreds of 
hands-on science experiments. We go to schools, we go to community centers, we go to events, we set them up. But the whole idea is that uh, kids have their hands on the science and are doing the doing the exploring themselves. Um, somewhere along the way, tie-dye shirts came along. Um, Heather was there for the very first one. Um, uh, and we're kind of known for our bright tie-dye uh, shirts. Um, uh, so maybe you've seen us um, in those before at uh, AAPT or APS. Um, but uh, over the last 30 years, we've built strong connections with the local school district and uh, the Native American Cultural Center here on campus. Um, and I included that because one of our strongest partnerships is with the Pine Ridge Reservation um, in South Dakota. And uh, we've been working together for over 20 years. Um, and actually they've made their own little shop of physics model um, up on the reservation. So we work together, we build things together. Uh, they have their own set of experiments on the reservation. They travel around to schools um, on the reservation um, doing kind of the same thing. And it's been really neat. So they teach us things and we build things with them. and. Um, it's been pretty awesome to have this arm of us uh, operating up there. Uh, and then most recently, we're expanding to um, a new campus uh, in Denver, uh, which Olivia actually works with. Um, and uh, yeah, just, you know, we jump on fun things when when uh, we're asked to, like workshops at um, AAPT and APS. And um, we were just at SPS Congress in DC. Um, so. Uh, again, short short history, but um, the the messiness down below is I wanted to show that having fun and um, is just interspersed through everything um, through the thirty years. Um, having fun and playing, I really should have said like keep playing. We just uh, really that's one of our uh, values that uh, it's how you stay connected with your work, um, and then also. Uh, over the 30 years, we've we've been operating under many different grants, um, which have just uh, forced us to pivot and do a different flavor of science outreach. And so um, I'd say we uh, kind of the same model throughout the, the 30 years, but definitely some it, it takes different form and functions um, depending on, yeah, the grant and the time and the need. Um, so uh yeah so that that was just meant to be quick and dirty and um and like if there's any questions at all just please hop in at any time uh oh there's a number of windows and i think it's okay it's okay okay, okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah so um yeah and heather did you want to add anything or does anybody have any questions or comments Cool. I, I would say, uh, I mean, the as you mentioned, Sherry, over time, things have changed. So we've, you know, I would say we started, we grew depending on our grants, and then we had to continue to sustain as we've moved on. Um, and you can see some of these photos are throughout our history and working with different folks, lots of beautiful tie dye. Uh, and so we'll talk about a little about each piece of things as we go. Um, so in the beginning, as Sherry mentioned, uh, the this was really started out of a, a need that the community had uh, reaching out to the physics department, which I can't imagine that cold call like, hey, physics department. Um, <laughs> um, but it started out of that need and the ideas grew over time. And this is uh, the pictures in the middle there are of uh, Matt Fackelman, who is employee number one of Little Shop. And you can see, I mean, they had ideas, they had fun. They were playing around with this hovercraft. Uh, they tried things out. Uh, some things were engaging. Uh, some things were not so cool in the beginning, um, uh, but it was all built around this need uh, so some of the needs that we filled in the beginning were going to schools, uh, libraries. Uh, we worked a lot with 4-H extension and going out to 
rural parts of the of the state. So we went to, I remember when I joined Little Shop, we went to uh, kind of about as east and about as south as you can get before you're in either Kansas or Oklahoma. Um, so I saw parts of the state that um, I never would have dreamed of uh, and got to share science with different communities. And I, I think that pushed our ideas into uh, new realms of things. And the big idea or the big thing around the ideas is, um, is this passion of science. So when I came on board, Brian has this passion that kind of sweeps you up into doing things. And I think this is a big part of what you need in the beginning is this passion because uh, in the beginning, sometimes funding isn't readily available. And so you have to have something that fuels your fire um, and also gets people excited and helps empower other people to want to create and do things. Uh, the last photo on there on the right uh, under passion is the first uh, picture of the first crew for the what we call our big open house that we have once a year, the last Saturday in February. So this was um, February of 1997. Uh, this one was taken. So a lot of the folks in the beginning and uh, from this, we have a very strong alumni group that does some of these folks in here uh, return every year to be a part of uh, our big events that we have. Yeah. Other things, Sherry or oh Olivia, yeah, I'll just wanna... uh, add on to that though that um, uh, uh, um, the reason why um, we we're kind of known for this big open house event um, that we usually have every February though not this next February um, but we have like ten thousand visitors that come through um, our student center on campus and we set up all of our things and we have as many partners as we can grab a hold of and they set up their things. So it's this, it's this epic event. Um, and so we're known really regionally um, for that, but that started in really humble roots. We were asked to, well, we, I wasn't quite a part of the program yet, but um, Brian was asked to um, kind of set up th some things following um, a physics bowl. Isn't that right, Heather? Yeah, so we were the the halftime show, sort of like the comic relief for the high school students who were coming to compete in the uh, in this big physics bowl kind of quiz competition, um, and it grew out of that. And when I came on board uh, the year after the photo was taken, um, uh, we were we knew open house initially was called physics bowl because that's what we were a part of. Yeah, so our our big event, um, you know, it didn't, it wasn't necessarily like our idea at the beginning, but um, but once the public started coming, um, along with just the high school physics students, we saw that, oh, you know, this is popular. Um, people like this, and we're reaching a lot of people this way. Um, so it very much was uh, just organically. I'd say the whole program over time, uh, very organically grown. Um, uh, and I think that's important that, um, you know, the ability to bend and flex and meet the needs of um, your population at the time have really lent well to uh, our longevity. Yeah, and, and, and Claudia brings up a good point in the chat about how we broke the Guinness World Record for the most number of folks reached or engaged at one time. So we've done an event at our big baseball stadium. Uh, we did uh, three different years. We saw 10,000 people at one shot. And this was a thing of like, we got called out of the blue uh, by, it was somebody who knew us, who used to be a mascot here at CSU and was a mascot for our baseball team and said, hey, I think Little Shop of Physics could help y'all with this big event you have in the stadium. And uh, honestly, like Brian said, hey, this sounds like a cool thing, let's do it. And it really pushed us and we did grow into this bigger thing. And what do we have? Like, do we have a hundred basketball, Sherry? Oh. 150 leaf blowers, something like that. Yeah. A lot. 
Yeah. It turns out when you want to do an event in a big, you know, this is Coors Field where the Colorado Rockies play. Uh, <laughs> everything has to just be made bigger and more of them um, to reach that whole crowd. So that was an epic day. Um, but yeah, we uh, we also wanted to just, you know, um, keep this kind of um, vague and loose because we know not every every science outreach group looks exactly like Little Shop of Physics. Um, uh, Heather got the chance over the uh, summer to go visit um, Eric with the physics bus up in uh, Cornell in Ithaca, New York. That's an awesome program, um, uh, getting kids engaged. Uh, and so, you know, um, starting something you know, might look a little different for um, everybody, depending on what kind of program you're starting, you know, it's it's likely going to start small, unless somehow you manage to get just a big grant to just uh, run with at the beginning. But, um, you know, we started really small um, and, and grew over time. But regardless of the type of program you have, whether it's a um, maker space or something like the little shop of physics or a traveling demo show um i think a lot of us are going to have the same kind of growing i don't know if i want to call them growing pains but you know um things you encounter as you grow um uh like uh space in time um we used to operate out of a small room uh, in the physics building. Uh, it was, uh, we were around um, it's tiny. A, a table that was six feet long and two feet wide. And all six interns would be building our projects like around this table. And if anybody wanted to shift left to, you know, get a glue gun or something, you know, we all had to shift one space left. Um, it was, it was very tight. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and, 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 the, and the conference table was donated by the, our physics department upgraded their conference table and we saw that they were surplusing it. And so we said, oh my gosh, this would be the best thing for our space to have this like big meeting area for people. So, I mean, we really, I think we hit the, the, the surplus area pretty hard in our local thrift stores and um, garage sales a lot mm -hmm. just to to gather parts that are ridiculously cheap like the in the photo here um the pool balls and then this old hamster ball you see in the middle this mm -hmm. is all stuff from uh from our thrift store our local thrift store yeah where we made a gravity well so um so it works well with uh our model um little shop of physics uh we strive to um, spread the message that anybody can do science with anything anywhere. Um, and so the projects that uh, uh, we travel around with um, are built by our undergraduate interns, um, uh, but they're built out of everyday objects so that when kids are, you know, kids at schools or kids at community events are playing with them, they recognize the thing they have in their hands, like, oh, that's, that's a hairdryer and that's a ping pong ball. Like, I can do this at home. And we say, yes, that's the point. We want you to see that what you're playing with is just everyday stuff. Um, and uh, so we don't have exhibits that are you know, uh, expensive. Um, we have exhibits no. that break quite often, um, but- and Yes. <laughs> and, and, and Claudia asked a really great question, like uh, how many folks do we have involved? And in the beginning, uh, a lot of the people involved in Little Shop of Physics happened to be a part of the Society of Physics students um, just because the rooms were next to each other. Uh, so it started off with just a handful of folks, so maybe 20 on the top end. Um, and I would say over time, uh, the regular interns that we have are probably, uh, there's about 10 interns that we have that come in, half of them are uh, paid and half of them are unpaid. Um, and then for our big events, uh, we draw volunteers from, uh, has been historically like from Brian Jones, our founder and director, um, uh, his class that he taught, he would bring a hundred volunteers from the class to be a part of things for our large events. Um, so it's kind of, it, it depends in, you know, the, 
the for the event, but I, I would say on a on a whole, maybe 10 undergraduates that we have in the shop. Does that sound right to you, Sherry and Olivia? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that sounds reasonable. Yeah, 10 on a on a regular basis. Um, and we found ways to tap into like she like you mentioned, uh, volunteers like from Brian's, uh, he teaches a class and they get a little bit of extra credit if they come and help uh, work the open house or um, there's communities on campus where we can say, we're running this event, can we get volunteers? And so it's it's these, uh, you know, undergraduates on campus that are service minded that, oh yeah, that sounds great, I'll sign up for that. Um, and so, uh, um, yeah, really trying to find any means possible to um, get people to work for free um, <laughs> <laughs> is uh, <laughs> um, really, you know, it just makes the program possible and it makes us uh, able to do big things. Oh, okay. Uh, just, yes. There's yeah. a question, when you recruit undergrads on campus for these events, what sort of training do you do, if any? Um, so honestly, uh, when we first bring in undergraduates, uh, initially the model has been folks wander in and usually we only get like one or two new new people at a shot. Um, so we bring them in, we give them a quick tour of the shop to show them where kind of the layout of the land is. And then we give them a project to fix. Um, and we sit them next to like one of our senior interns who, you know, maybe a, somebody who is good with guiding other people through things. And so a lot of what the undergraduates learn is from other folks. Um, so it's the model of learning through um, uh, like watching and seeing what people do. So with some people, I think it's a little more intuitive. Uh, others, you gently guide them and give them a little more training in areas. I know when I started, I was terrified of some of the power tools like table saws. Um, and routers. And uh, one of the first projects Brian had me build was with a table saw. So <laughs> right out the gate, he was teaching me how to use these things in a safe way. Um, so we do, I, I would say it is, uh, sometimes it could be people intensive as far as staff goes. Uh, currently, we have four staff members, four to five staff members um, who are there to kind of help make things go on a day where it's our build it days and our repair days did, did that answer oh yeah i was just going to add on that like we like that we're like a zero entry level like you don't have to have skills when you come to us like we will teach you things we're just glad you're here um and uh and feedback from our interns has been really positive um uh we have a couple that are uh physics majors and one said like the thing that drew me to little shop was I showed up uh two minutes in Heather had me fixing something um and you know compared to some other programs they could be involved in on campus like um engineering challenges sort of things they said like you know as a freshman sophomore junior you just really like watch and then your senior year you actually get to participate and they're like little shop couldn't be like <laughs> more, uh, you know, 180 from that. Like I, you know, I was there two minutes later, they're saying fix this. Um, and uh, so uh, they loved that they were just thrown in and um, like got to get their hands on stuff right away. And it uh, looks like, and I, I don't know if you see the window when I look at my chat, so I'm a little paranoid to leave it up too long, um, but there's a question, um, uh, thoughts about a single event versus longer term, but often smaller programs, impl impl implementation, impl implications for you participating facilitators program, et cetera. Um, I, I would say a lot of this, like what we did starts with, you, you try something like a single event. You, so you go out to a school and you see how it goes and you see how that's received. And a lot of uh, what we do is uh, we call it engagement because it means we go out, we see what the people want and what the needs are. And then in return, they're teaching us something about 
themselves, but also like the community needs and what they're learning. Um, I don't know if that's kind of in the, uh, yeah, in the, Claudia brings up a good point. It depends what your goals are. I would say for us, like part of our sustaining model is we try different things and we try different partners and we see what works. So like some of the big events has been awesome. And some of the big events we've done have been uh, like, it was awesome. And I'd never want to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, uh, it is. It's, um, it's surprising the impact of, um, of a one time thing. Like, so, so we definitely have um, places where we have these long-standing relationships, like I mentioned with um, uh, Pine Ridge in South Dakota, but we've worked with many reservations and have many long-standing relationships. Um, uh, we've also been to Uganda and Namibia and like have these relationships with people um, that have lasted years and years. And those are places we return and they come to us. Um, but I'd say our general model is like, you know, we go to a school, we visit for a day, we get all the kids through, they all have like the fun of um, exploring with our experiments. Um, and you'd sit, like, you kind of think, well, that didn't really build a strong relationship, except for every time I'm in this shirt and out around Fort Collins, I get stopped by somebody, you know, ages like still in school, still in K-12, all the way up to, you know, like age 50, um, and then maybe not 50, I guess it's only been going 30 years, but uh, 45, you know, some as old as me. I remember when Little Shop came to my school 30 years ago, and that one day stuck with them so much, like, uh, and um, and that's pretty powerful. Like, uh, I just love that about our program that um, I've never had somebody stop me and say, uh, I had this really negative experience. <laughs> um, it's always positive and it's, uh, and it's because, you know, for that one day, like we let them free explore and they got to see themselves as a scientist. Um, and I think that's just, uh, yeah, that retains in your long-term memory. It must, um, And Claudia brings up a good point in the chat, just uh, that building and retaining model. Um, and just to chat like quickly about some of the things on here. So at the top of the screen, um, Chris and, in the green tie dye, and then we have Magna in the blue shirt. So Magna is from uh, the Science Circus in Norway. And uh, Chris is, uh, he had his own uh, outreach um, in uh, Chicago area. He's a retired high school teacher. Um, so we partner with other folks who've done other things and they come out and keep things fresh. So Chris and Magna came out and Magna built this thing in like this rocket launcher in like 20 minutes in this sassy pressurized rocket launcher that um, kids were designing rockets and launching them. Uh, and that's been a great partnership over the years. Um, Oh, and Boris asked a question about uh, it's changing uh, with different countries in Africa and what was the impact. Uh, we were just talking about this the other day. Um, so two of the places that we have visited, uh, um, I would say Namibia more often, uh, Uganda, we got to go uh, once and we're hoping to go back to Uganda. So in Namibia, we worked with a gold mining company. And if you're going to get funding from somebody, a gold mine is a good place to go um so they've got money um <laughs> but the neat thing about that piece of things is namibia like first of all it's a very amazing place to go visit it's a very gentle way like they call it africa for beginners <laughs> um it's a nice entry point to go um and do uh work with but the b2 gold mine they have a facility where they're set up to do education and give back to the community as a part of their um, corporate uh, responsibility. Um, and because of that, like we went there first, I think in the year for the t-shirt I'm wearing. So 2015 is the first year we went to Namibia. And we have been back 
uh, three times since, um, and we just shipped them a box of stuff um, last week um, because they're still interested in maintaining this relationship. All the uh, hands-on experiments that um, we built out there when we went, uh, they still use, and they're actually building and growing on that model, and they would love us to come back. Um, we also did a, a lot of teacher workshops when we were in Namibia through B2 Gold, and the teachers got uh, like $100 worth of hands-on activities, US dollars, to take back to their classrooms, and teachers are still writing us on WhatsApp saying how they're so grateful they still have all these materials and how they're still using them. Um, I think a big piece of our model, because we're not going in and saying you need to do science this way, we're going in and saying like, what do y'all want? What do y'all have? And we're doing science with the things that they have there. And that, I think that makes it more sustainable and it helps things to last a little, little bit longer. I'll just jump in real quick to just to say like um, we didn't go searching after uh, B2 Gold. So just so the people know how that started, <laughs> um, it was actually a, a Fort Collins local um, person who was over there at the mine. Like um, uh, what what was this um, title, I guess, of Sherry at that time? But anyway, she was <laughs> familiar with another Sherry. Um, she was familiar with Little Shop of Physics because she lived here. Her kids had experienced Little Shop of Physics in school here. Um, and so while she's working at the mine in Africa um, and saw this need for education and outreach, she said, oh, hey, I, I have an idea. Like, I know this awesome group. Um, we can, you know, bring them over and have them help us in this capacity. Um, and, um, uh, and then just really quickly, too, to mention the Uganda connection. So uh, we have a friend that uh, is the janitor um, in the physics uh, building here on campus. Um, I've known him over 20 years. Um, Robert is his name, and he's just the friendliest um, man. Uh, he's from Uganda, um, and he um, saves up money like crazy um, to send back to Uganda to help um uh orphans um from his hometown um so there was a big fundraising effort um about five years ago um to raise money to build a school uh for the children in his hometown and they they uh raised so much money they actually were able to build three or four buildings where they were kind of just hoping to get one anyway and money goes a long way in uganda um and so they built the buildings and so kind of as a um, ribbon cutting and school opening event, um, there was a, about a team of eight people from CSU, uh, Little Shop made up part of that team uh, that traveled over with, with supplies for the school. So as the school is opening and with Robert there, who's just our friend, um, uh, we were able to um, just kind of help out in that way. And, and Claudia asks, like, how, how do we do this in a way that is respectful of whatever local culture that we're working with? And, and I think a, a lot of it is um, at, like initially asking questions and maybe doing research on our own so we understand some of the context of the area. Like before we went to Uganda, it was a lot of talking to Robert and understanding what the needs were, understanding that like, what we're going to bring to share, that's what the teachers need. Um, and so a lot of it is this whole engagement thing where we're asking questions, we're doing a little research on our own, um, and, and then just seeing like, hey, is this kind of what you're looking for? And then they'll tell us like, yes or no. <laughs> And kids and I think are all these, ridiculously yeah. good at that. Oh, sorry. Oh, when when they're naturally born out of relationships you already have, which is what was for us, it was just we had a relationship with the Native American Cultural Center on campus, and they were the first ones to get us up to Pine Ridge, and then we meet, and you know, it just it clicked and it stuck, and you know, and we learned from them, and they learned from us, and um, it, we just we make sure that um, both sides see it as a you know this is a relationship like we brought you stuff, but we're expecting like you to teach us 
something or show us something cool, like, um, uh, you know, we, we get just as much out of uh, that as they do. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I'd say all of these just really, really born out of um, relationships with people that we had already. Um, and then uh, I'll, I want to mention this picture in the, um, in the bottom left, uh, Little Shop of Physics has kind of this new model where um, uh, we'll still go to schools, but we're also going to um, kind of underrepresented populations um, in Fort Collins. And so through the city, uh, this uh, the city of Fort Collins that we're in um, has some goals to um, uh, just around equity um, and diversity and inclusion. Um, uh, trying to bring our program to the kids in town that wouldn't go to the local science museum um, out, you know, um, they, they wouldn't get this experience otherwise. And so uh, we wrote uh, a grant through a local foundation and they funded us to take our program to set up on the streets um, in some of the mobile home parks in town. Um, so I'd say uh, it's still our same program. Um, we're just trying to meet another need and partnering with the city who has the same goals um, that we do. Um, and what's really cool is that uh, like our newest hire, Olivia, um, speaks Spanish. We've like, <laughs> we've tried for years to find somebody who like understands the science, but speaks Spanish so that we can uh, reach more kids. And um, uh, Olivia has been uh, great at that. And she's young <laughs> and she knows how to use like the Instagram and things. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we can just reach more people when um, uh, we have a more diverse crew ourselves. Yeah, and um, one of the questions that came up in the, the chat, oh, sorry, jumping the gun a little bit. Oh, boy, there we go. Um, uh, was how is B2 Gold regarded in the community? Uh, from what I saw, it, they were regarded well because they really give back to the, the whole community, the communities that they're in and the communities that they're impacting and also their mission is to employ all the local people. So they come in with a crew of people who initially maybe is not from Namibia, but then they are replacing them with people who are local. So that felt good. Um, I mean, they're still a gold mining company and they do the things that they do. So mm. Oh, many different grants. Um, funding uh, asks about many different grants and different funding opportunities. Um, so some of it is uh, we work, I would say a big piece is we have a good relationship with our, um, like our grant writing folks uh, at, in our college. Uh, so we work with them and we say, you know, here's kind of the thing that we can provide. Do y'all see grants that come in in these sorts of flavors. So through that, we've been able to connect to lots of big corporations to do um, different grant stuff. Uh, we apply for small grants even that we see that come through our um, uh, like different entities at our college. In fact, Olivia just wrote one uh, for a mini grant to pay for four undergraduates to work for us in the spring. Uh, and that one came through our uh, Office of Equal Opportunity, I believe, um, or Equity Office of Excellence, Inclusive Excellence. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I guess we we take a look at and you know like grant getting grants. There's a trade off, right? So you want to get a grant that um, is going to kind of pay the bills and do the things you need it to do. And at the same time, balance that with what does the reporting look like? Um, what sorts of things are you need to provide in the end of things? Uh, certainly, like there's been some grant funding that we've gotten that's that's been great and it actually pushed us into the realm of um, working with uh, physics education research groups who look at what the impact is for informal science. So this is another arena that like, again, the grants push us into different arenas. And that's one of them is, 
hey, how do you justify what you do isn't just all like going out and playing with kids? Like, are the kids actually learning? And so we partner with different groups to do research, to study like, how long do kids stay at experiments? Are they gaining a, what is it? A positive attitude at the end of things. How is this impacting our undergraduates and our staff? And how is that over years, um, you know, looking back? So I know like uh, Brian, uh, not to call out name names, but uh, Brian Stanley, who's on the call, is one of the folks that we've worked with uh, in evaluating groups like ourselves. And I'd say a lot of just it's happened kind of through campus. So it's just um, being situated at a university has been really um, helpful um, because uh, for a while, um, our high energy physics group um, here on campus was making a push to um, get the Dune experiment that ended up in South Dakota, but they were pushing to get it here at the Henderson uh, mine in Colorado. And um, and so we had funding for a while to be like their education and outreach arm for this future um, big um, research project. Um, probably our biggest, longest grant ever was the Center for Multiscale Modeling of Atmospheric Processes. Mm -hmm. um, so the Atmospheric uh, Science Department got this giant 10-year grant um, and asked if we would help them be the education and outreach component of that. And we said... Well, we don't know much about atmospheric science, but we'll learn quickly. Um, and you know, we knew there was physics involved, but we just didn't know quite how. But um, we uh, had a barbecue where we invited all these atmospheric scientists, and then um, we like, uh, as a team, we like separated and we cornered people, yeah. and uh, we asked these atmospheric scientists, like, um, okay if you were to make like a top five list of top five things everybody, the general public should know about atmospheric science, what would it be? Um, just to kind of like dive into their field and find out from the experts, what's most important? What do people need to know? Um, and so from that barbecue, we, we kind of created a list of um, top things to know. Um, and then like workshops were built out of that. And uh, workshops we did with teachers and new experiments, uh, hands-on experiments that went on the road, uh, like touch a cloud, <laughs> were built out of that. Um, and so uh, it's it's been nice and uh, uh, being situated on a college campus where you just, you, there's these different projects that pop up from time to time. And luckily we've been able to like hop on and help out um, in the education outreach piece of some of those. Yeah, and Claudia mentions uh, like the UK, the model looks a little different. And I know for like Magna, he tells us like in Norway, they get a ridiculous amount of funding to do science outreach and engagement. Um, and they're, they can only work four days a week and they have to take a like rest day on the fifth day. So I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> so I think it, it, it looks different in every place. And I realized like, gosh, this is probably the most amount of talking we've ever done. I don't know how Sherry and Olivia feel about this. What do y'all think about diving into the next piece? Yeah, yeah. I just, I wanted to leave because, you know, obviously we've brought up some hurdles and, you know, every time you think of applying to grants and stuff that can all like, yeah, it can just seem like you're up against a wall. Um, but just really wanted the takeaway to be like, we started from very humble roots. And, you know, what you're seeing now from Little Shop, you're seeing a seed that was planted 30 years ago, and you're seeing it now. Um, and so it can look intimidating. How do you have a program so big? Well, we weren't always so big. Um, and, and, uh, and I think the thing that's led to our longevity is just, um, we really see the value in continuing to play ourselves. Like um, we just allow ourselves time to play and explore and be kids and um, uh, and just feel that wonder um, so that we're not getting so far removed from 
uh, why do we do what we do again? <laughs> you know, why, why am I writing this grant again? You know, um, uh, we we're constantly reminded of why we do the work that we do. But um, yeah, and as a piece of like what we're what we do, just to, I, I forgot to mention this earlier. We started a class that's like Little Shop of Physics intro. So this is for was intended for incoming freshmen. Although I have folks that are at different grade levels um, or uh, different levels at the university who are taking it, but it it's a good way to get them in the door for credit. Um, so it's again a different model just to like, hey, try this out, and then we don't have to pay them, and then they get credit to come do this thing and be a part of this thing, and then maybe they get hooked and want to stay with us. <laughs> yeah. That's a great piece that uh, we kind of hinted on earlier. Like, so some of our interns are paid. Um, some of them are here for like credit. Um, and some just need volunteer hours for like their, their future teachers. And they have to accumulate so many volunteer hours with the educational something, something. Um, and so, you know, um, you know we'll take all of them. Right. And some just want to volunteer because it's a fun place to be. Um, so, uh, yeah thinking about different ways you can tap into people. Um, um, yeah, uh, I know we've uh, went like the, the hour now. Um, uh, I just wanted to, um, Heather, if you could go to the next screen. Yes. Just to encourage people to, uh, I don't know, play and um, maybe think about the things at your desk um, a little uh, differently. Oh, that's right. I need to share my screen. Um, oh yeah. Oh, Do you yeah. want to? Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I was just gonna quickly just go through, you know, just some things you could, you could even do, um, you know, at your own screen. Let's see. I think I could do it like that. Let's see. Oh no, I'm doing this wrong. It's okay. If you go to the this. Oh. You, you're sharing, so. Oh, yes, stop, sorry. stop sharing. Okay, right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is where I'm gonna get me. Actually, it's me, it's me that I want you to see. <laughs> so I don't need to share a screen, I need to just uh, use this one. So um, you have to drink a little bit more, but have you seen this where like, I just uh, can't drink a pop without like getting it to that level anymore. So it's like a fun center of mass. So um, you've got to drink it down far enough but then because it has this little ridge right there, once you've got the liquid inside uh, at the right level, you can balance it like that. I don't know, it's just fun and surprising. Um, uh, you can take two pencils and like look through them. And if you squeeze them together, it can work like a diffraction grating. So you can like look out the window and, um, you'll notice like little uh, bands of light, uh, super fun. Um, and a glass of water and like, you know, there's the arrows, but if I back up, they flip. Not cool. Arrows go into the right. Now they're going to the left. Um, so lots of stuff you can do with a glass of water. Uh, just last week we were, um, playing around with this colorful gaffer tape and like shining a green, oh, my laser might have went dead. This is a green laser and shining it on the different colors of gaffer tape. Oh, darn it. I knew it was weak, but uh, it was neat to see the, the reflection of the light would come off as different colors, but then as it reflected onto a white board, it was actually still green, which blew my mind. Yeah. Um, so that was crazy. Uh, and, you know, so often we're just like with the things in front of us playing and then that gets born into a project or an activity. Um, and I, I, uh, I know some people are saying like, you know, thanks had to go. Um, we can stay, uh, we can, um, it looks like there's like five of us now. Um, so we can stay and answer any questions or, uh, if you want to play, <laughs> if you have ideas, uh, want to help out in any way we can. <laughs> 